Hello, my name is Brandon, and welcome to Retro Reactions, a place where I experience amazing music from the 70s, 80s, and 90s for the very first time. And today we're going to be traveling all the way back to 1993 and 1996 to listen to Fade Away and Dark Matter by Porcupine Tree. I've heard two songs from this band so far, absolutely incredible, so uh, these two came highly recommended. I'm excited to check them out. Anyway, if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button as well as the notification bell to join the Retro Reactions crew where it's all amazing music all the time. Here we go.
like that part's going to keep going for a while. So, ah, porcupine tree. They have this way of putting you into this soft, hypnotic, introspective type of trance. So gentle, floating as always, but in its own unique style, and I love it. I assume at this point in Porcupine Tree's career, everything was done solely by Steve Wilson, and that's just absolutely incredible. He's got such musical ability, such songwriting skills, such you know music writing skills, such an imagination. Just He knows how to do great world building in his music. Right from the get-go, we got this immediate atmosphere, and like I said, world building, that's just a signature to uh, many of their songs, I'm going to assume. Uh, and that's achieved a lot through those amazing keyboard sounds. But I also love the drumming here. Very, very impactful, especially in the beginning. Just kind of hit me hard. It doesn't always, but definitely appreciated that. I assume that's Steve as well. Uh, I love the soft vocals here. I have a feeling he does different vocal styles, but perfect here. Almost not really whispering, but heading that way. And that just gives his voice a very hypnotic feel. Absolutely love that. There's so much texture in those unique keyboard sounds and other instruments that he's using, I believe, you know. They just build that world. And then you add in the other instruments, the great guitar, the great drums, the great bass. And, you know, you're always transported somewhere. Probably a different place in each song, but a similar type of vibe, similar type of location, but a unique place in each song, I'm guessing. Kind of like Pink Floyd does. Simply put... There's a gentle, hypnotic, melancholy feel to this whole song, and I think it's going to be a recurring theme in a lot of their music, so really excited to discover more from them. Anyway, let's continue. Great, great ending there. Brought everything down, just faded out. I definitely love that long, long guitar solo, you know. It gave us time to really get lost in the music of the solo uh, for a while and just sit there and relax and enjoy it. Love that. Love when um, solos or sections take their time, you know. I love the descending feeling of the outro, you know. Slow, descending, everything going away. Um, in general, I love soft, slow fade outs or cool downs, as I'll call them, at the end of songs, because it just kind of lets us take a breath, um, finish off the song in a soft, subtle way, especially if there were harder or big elements, you know, earlier in the song. Just fade down, cool down. I love that. So pretty bleak lyrics here. I think the song is describing a man who is trapped in isolation, cut off from the world he once knew. He seems to be recalling a relationship that is now lost. His mental stability is declining, or perhaps he has already passed away. But the world continues on and he is quickly forgotten. Wow. So just deep, sad lyrics to match this deep, emotional, hypnotic, and gentle music. I love this one. I'm going to rate it. Five golden records. 
Yes, for Fade Away by Porcupine Tree, 1993. Okay, now we're checking out Dark Matter from 1996. Here we go. Inside the vehicle, the cold is extreme. Smoke in my throat kicks me out of my dream. I try to relax, but it's warmer outside. I fail to collect, it's a tragic divide.
wow just over halfway and that first section was absolutely incredible i'm sure you saw my expressions throughout a few big surprises as well mm. again so much atmosphere building and transporting us somewhere else right from the start i love that their music does that um, i love the deep held synth notes going on there creating much deep texture much deep feelings there love that um, again, super hypnotic in the beginning sections, even more so than the last song, I thought that was really cool. Just got me instantly into the song and kept me going more and more and more. Um, I love the up close, intimate vocals on this one, different again from the last song. Uh, just makes a different impact hearing him right behind your ears or right in between your ears, you know. Uh, not really any reverb, just intimate vocals, like I said. And then you got some great harmonies in this one. I love that. Again, I assume it's all Steve Wilson doing the singing, but it sounded beautiful, sounded incredible. I love the acoustic guitar arpeggios in one section there. So much happening in the song. And again, it's only a little over half over. But then this change up uh, when they sang Crushed Like a Rose might have been the lyrics, but that change up there, incredible, not only with the chord progression, uh, but with the vocals, it sounded amazing. There was some more great harmonies there. One of my favorite parts of the song, kind of unexpected. Speaking of unexpected, then we get an acoustic guitar solo. Extremely unexpected because it sounded so different than the rest of the song that I'd heard up to that point. Um, almost like you're listening to a Sting song, you know. It just completely changed. Really nice surprise, but still fit, was still beautiful. Then we move on to an electric guitar solo that sounded incredible, took me to another place, you know, even higher and just big jumps in the music. They just take you up there at certain sections, keep you down in the hypnosis and other sections. So I love the variety there. Anyway, let's go back a little and finish off this song, see what else they have to offer. So far, very amazing. <laughs>
You've just had a heavy session of electroshock therapy, and you're more relaxed than you've been in weeks. All those childhood traumas magically wiped away, along with most of your personality. <laughs> wow. Electroshock therapy. It almost felt like that at the end, the way it just ramped up so much. Had me lost. You saw it. Wow. Wow. What a song. Another great change up after my break um, with the organ. Great sound there. Kind of took us in a totally different direction. Then we got more emotional, highly emotional electric guitars. A big solo. It lasted a while. That sounded incredible, you know. Just um, really got me. I wrote down that this song is perfect for a live setting. And I'm sure there's several amazing performances on YouTube of this. I'm sure they've done it a lot. I hope they've done it a lot because, again, it's perfect. It's a long song, epic moments, uh, just like some of their others. But um, I'd even love to hear a lot of those guitar solos in different sections extended even more in a live setting to make it, you know, almost double the song, you know. I don't know. I think that would be cool. Maybe they even did that. Who knows? But I'll probably find out. Then at the end section, the guitars ramped up completely. That sounded incredible. Really, really highly emotional. We'll call it electric therapy, literally, like they said at the end there. It sounded very 90s, and I loved it. That was one of my favorite sections of the song, but many favorites in this song. Then a pretty abrupt ending. Normally, I don't like that, but it was fitting to what they were doing here. Just ended it and gave a long, long pause. Felt like almost a minute. Kind of let you just sit there and think about what you just experienced. And then you get that spoken word telling you what just happened. And I thought that was a really interesting way to end the song. Beautiful song. Loved it. Going to check out the lyrics. Interesting that this was the first album, I guess, in 1996 to use a full proper band, you know, with Porcupine Tree. It wasn't just Steve at this point. And that's really interesting to know that, you know, everything I was hearing was done by several members and not just Steve. So to me, the lyrics are discussing uh, different ways people choose to achieve fame and notoriety and the consequences that come with it. Uh, there's three scenarios here. The first one, you know, someone taking their life in a car. They're physically and metaphorically trapped inside, and that will get people talking for sure. The second story seems to be discussing those who commit heinous acts of violence and then become nationally known, unfortunately, because of their actions, which take out other innocent people. And the third story seems to be discussing those who enter the volatile world of entertainment and stardom. Artists pour their heart and soul into their creations, and those creations can be bashed, dismissed, or forgotten in a matter of minutes. All three of these scenarios show the dark side of fame. And again, that's simply a dark topic, or we can call it a dark matter. All right, I absolutely love this one. You saw my expressions, my reaction. I have to give this one the Epic Platinum Record Award. Yes, for Dark Matter by Porcupine Tree, 1996. Thank you, Steve Wilson, Richard Barbieri, Colin Edwin, and Chris Maitland. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so, so much for watching, especially if you made it here to the end. Really appreciate that. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment down below if you wish to chat about these two amazing songs or anything Porcupine Tree. Would love a few more suggestions. Anyway, you take care, stay safe, stay hydrated, and remember to let peace, calm, and light into your day and night. And I'll see you next time in the past.